G'day, you're with Sean at the Australian Restorer. Sorry for the lack of content recently, ladies and gents. You know, it's just one of those things, life gets in the way. Anyway, what I have for you today is a bit of equipment prep for the incoming uh, mowing season and one of my pieces of gear that's been giving me a little bit of grief of late. So spring has just sprung in my region and for those who aren't aware, I have a lawn mowing business called Blade Mate Lawn Care and obviously I need all my equipment running as best as it possibly can. So today what's going to occur, I'm going to go ahead and give this bad boy a service and down this end, I'm uh, missing a bolt here that it's been, it's been snapped off on the inside there unfortunately so I'm going to have to get that out um, and I'll, re I'll give in there a grease as well. And need to replace a few components under this end to make sure that I can actually use it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now first things first, just give the Exterior, or when I say exterior, it's underneath the casing, but you know, everything I can reach, a bit of a brush down just to get any large bits of debris. It shouldn't be too bad. I'll try and you know, clean my equipment reasonably regularly. However, you, know, you still get the build up of crap on here. Have a look at that. Pretty grubby, the air filter. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that one for one it so now i'm not going to pull it apart and clean it noting that it has been running just fine and i'm a firm believer of if it ain't broke don't fix it so if i started having issues and fuel lags and this that and the other i'll definitely go ahead and clean it out and you know identify blockage in the jets or whatnot but i'm not having that problem right now so let's just go ahead and go that far This is just a little bit of degreaser, a bit quicker and easier I figure. There we go, it's getting in all those spots. You wouldn't use this on the inside of your carby, but noting that it's all sealed, I'm happy just to tip it over the greasy bits on the outer. Now they'll accuse me of not making a mess when I work. Now, because there's a possibility this could get inside the air tank there, now I'm using the carby cleaner just inside the air filter housing there. Definitely you wouldn't use degreaser on this part. Now, just with that wet rag with the de degreaser on it, just give me everything a wipe down because why not? It's like anything in life, a clean machine is a happy machine. What do you reckon ladies and gents? You reckon that could look like it could use a bit of a clean up, that exhaust? I reckon. <coughs> wow, so got a new challenge. Um, <laughs> okay. So, this snapped off in there. Let's see if I can show you. You can kind of see it, trying to get the light. Yeah, so, you know, look in that hole, that little bit you see in there is actually the end of that, snapped off. So I've just had a little bit of an ordeal trying to get that bloody thing out. I can't fit anything down there to get it out properly. I did try using um, my little screwdriver that fits the hex head on it. No dice, I just I just can't physically get enough leverage to turn it. I've got penetrant in there, oil trying to loosen it up. Um, obviously I've tried banging it, it's just not working. So what I've had to do is problem solve and make a tool. I've had to destroy one of my tools to make this work. Oh yeah, I even tried a bloody pipe wrench on this thing. Um, so this is just my normal little 
hand screwy thing that I can fit my hex head tools in. So these pieces, that's the size that fits in there. Um, unfortunately, I just, I just can't get it done. So I've had to pull this apart and kind of reconfigure it. Um, I tried it on my, on my drill and it, it just wouldn't buzz with even my drill. So the only thing that's gonna get this off is a rattle gun. So what I've had to do, take the end, um, just cut that, just hit that with my cutting disc. And so now, with any luck, this will go on my rattle gun and I should just be able to blast it off. We'll find out in a second. No, nah, just destroyed the tool I made. Now I do have one of these, but it just doesn't fit. It's caught there, so that's why. Just in case you're wondering. Fingers crossed that a solution has presented itself in the form of the simplest one yet. Spanner that fits on there and might just be able to turn it. Problem is keeping the downward pressure on it. Oop. Is that the news I want? Was that the noise I want? Or was that the sound of this ripping the end off that thread? No. We're in business, ladies and gentlemen. Gotta love when things go my way. Look at that. Look at all the crap under there too. What a good opportunity to clean that out. Now for those who aren't really aware, what this build up of grease and crap do, look, even if it doesn't affect the functionality per se, it does contribute to the machine not cooling down effectively. Kind of like wearing a you know, jumper in summertime. Now it's a bit difficult for you guys to see, but with that exhaust off, I can have a look down the, into the bore. Sorry, I can't really just get light in there and the cameras at the same time. Um, but yeah, what I can see there, it's, it's very shiny, it looks good. Uh, no scratches or gouges, so this is an old machine. Um, I've only had it for about 18 months, and yeah, it's seen a lot of work, but it's re it's remaining in pretty good condition, so that's a good sign when I look in there and I see that there's no scoring and wear marks and stuff. I'm just giving this a quick uh, wipe with solvent because I'm going to spray it with some high heat paint. Just for future proofing, you know, getting the rust off long term. Just a bit of aluminium tape or aluminium for anyone who doesn't speak the Queen's. That's the air filter cap, you can see it's pretty grimy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give that a wash in the degreaser bath. So I've encountered a little bit of a problem. Here's the new air filter I bought. It's obviously for a different model. 
I double checked, I always double check when I order parts online and this was definitely for the one advertised. So I may have to send the, the seller a message. It's, they're not expensive, so I'm not losing sleep over it. But as you can see, if you look here, there's a gap. That's about, oh, at, its, at its widest, about five mil. So quite a lot of crap could get underneath there and as such into the carby. So here's the other one and like you can see that fits like a bloody glove. It's just nice and snug and that's perfect. It is a fibre one, so I can wash it and reuse it. Alrighty, so it come up like a bloody new one after a clean. Happy with that. Just warm soapy your water and a good rinse. Left it out in the sun for half an hour to dry and we're happy. Go ahead and got myself a new spark plug. Given the inside of the cover, a bit of wipe down, get the bulk of the dirt off. Not going to be as fussy about this as I was with everything else because in one day of some hard work, we'll all be back there anyway. So it's the old why make your bed if you're just going to mess it up that night debate, you know. Put a bit of penetrant oil in this one as well. Okay, lovely. I made a serious dog's breakfast out of this. Um, I couldn't get the the broken off screw out with those easy outs. Um, so what I'm resorting to, this is literally the last ditch effort. I've drilled that hole larger. Um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and fill that with this stuff. It dries really quickly. It's really, really, really firm. Um, and then I can go ahead and drill and tap that when it's in there and put a screw back in there. I really can't think of what else I can do. Um, now the reason I'm gonna use this stuff instead of just going ahead and tapping that with a bigger bolt or screw is because I simply don't have one that's the right size. And with the current lockdowns we're in, it is a, just a pain in the butt to try and buy anything. You're not allowed to go into the shops, you gotta order it all online and then call them when you're outside the store. And I, I just don't wanna deal with that. So I'm choosing this solution.
So for anyone who's never used this stuff before, um, it's just a putty that you knead into itself. It's got this hardening compound in the center of it. And you smush it all up until it's a uniform color. And then you just kind of stick it where or on what you need to remain in place. And leave it for an hour and you can do all sorts of things with it, including drilling and tapping. So that's the application I'm gonna use it for. I have prepped all this and cleaned everything out. Um, I got right in there with the degreaser bath and I went ahead and hit it all with uh, the white spirits again, just to um, really make sure it's dry and there's no sort of crap that's gonna be in there that I didn't want in there. I've never actually used it in this fashion before to plug a hole and then re-drill it out. So you know, if you think I'm looking a bit funny doing it, bear with me. I've never actually tried it before. I'm sure there's an easier way. Alrighty, hopefully that's all in there. Pretty compact. So just for some, anyone who wasn't quite aware of what I was doing just then, or what the problem was. So this is just a bit of a rough drawing. Imagine this is a hole and these jagged bits, that's the, the thread um, that the actual bolt itself screws into like that. So obviously you can see the shape of the thread there. Now this bit here, that's a snapped off thread that I had in there. So basically from kind of here down, that's what this bit is. And it snapped off, can't get it out. I've tried various methods to get it out unsuccessfully. So what I'm resorting to now, basically I'll just drill the whole thing. So I drill the hole larger, so it's kind of about this big. And then I filled it full of that crap just before, the that putty, and that's fully filled up like that now. And that's gonna set. And then what I can do, I'll just start on a new picture here. So I imagine that's this, but filled up. So what I then go ahead and do is drill all that stuff out. So obviously we're left with a nice clean hole again. However, you'll notice that there's no threads in there to screw a bolt into. So what I then go and do is tap that. And what that means, I've got to take a special tool and I'll just kind of slowly twist it in there. And then that goes ahead and produces a new hole for a nut to screw into. Now I don't actually have the same size tap as this one so I will be using a different nut but you know the principle remains I'll have a fresh hole with fresh threads and a a bolt that fits. Did I say nut? I meant to say bolt. Yeah so hopefully that explains that to anyone who didn't quite understand. And just while I'm waiting for the putty to dry might as well go ahead and top up the grease on the inside of the trimmer head here. In fact, looking at that, doesn't really need it. It's still filled up right at the top there. And I can see it coming out of the base. So that's all right. Part of a service is not always fixing something or, you know, adding or subtracting consumables it's just a check over and in this case the check has proven that i don't need to do that so it's going to replace the missing components it's a matter of just taking a new spindle now these are cheap these are cheap um in my blade mate lawn care videos I often have some people uh, telling me that i shouldn't be tapping this on concrete because it wears these out too quick um now the reason you tap it, that's just to press down on the little spring here and continue to feed uh, the, the cord out. Um, and obviously if you tap it on a hard surface, this will wear out quicker as well. Gets all holes and just, yeah, plastic getting worn through because it spins real quick. Uh, the reason I tap it on the concrete is just because sometimes if you hit it on the grass and it sends it out real quick, real suddenly, um, you can just leave a little patch, like chunk out of the grass, which I don't really like doing. So I'm happy to... Uh, replace these periodically, which you'd have to anyway, um, rather than you know take a chunk out of a lawn. So, just cost of doing business, I guess. This all goes on really, really easily. 
quite new and stiff. So, get on there. We have success. It's screwing in nicely. So yeah, not unlike what I mentioned earlier about wearing a jumper in summertime, um, you just want to keep this as cool as possible as well. That's why it has grease in there. Yeah, just getting rid of that layer of grime kind of helps out a bit.